Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Rejoice now, all heavenly powers. Sing, choirs of angels. Exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ is risen. Christ has conquered glory, fills the earth, death vanquished forever. Rejoice, O holy church, exalt in glory. The risen Savior shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. Hallelujah. Let us sing. Christ is risen. risen Let us pray. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Good morning. Good morning. So today's readings, we'll be skipping Psalms. So just the uh, first reading and the second reading. First reading is from Jeremiah chapter 31. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and shall be my, they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when the sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Second reading is from Colossians chapter 3. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. 
Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. I'd like to welcome children up for our children's message today. Good morning. Happy, happy Easter. So do you know, do you know what we're supposed to say at Easter? So if I say Christ is risen, do you know what you're supposed to respond with? Okay, I'm going to say Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. I'll come right back to you, Brooks, okay? Thank you. I've got with me something here. What does it look like? The Easter bunny. The Easter bunny or Easter basket. Yes, look at my Easter basket. So I thought I'd show you some things in here, and then I want you to tell me if there's something that doesn't look like it fits in this basket, okay, for Easter. There is a bunny. Oh, there's a bug. Big bug. I don't think he belongs. Um, there are some jelly beans. I like jelly beans. I don't there, <laughs> I like jelly beans too. What are these? Eggs. Eggs and a rock. So what doesn't belong? The rock. The rock. The rock. You agree? The rock does. You don't think so? Why? Why not? So I'm going to agree with Lorelai. The rock is actually probably the most real part of the Easter story. Did you know that? On yeah, Easter, the rock was in the yes, the rock was in front, rolled in front of the tomb, right? In front of the cave. Yes, where Jesus died. Where Jesus died. And on Easter morning, he, the, he did. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. He didn't stay in the in the cave. The whole story. So the women. Can I retell the story now? Is that okay? <laughs> so the women came to the tomb, and suddenly there was an earthquake. Can you shake a little bit? There was an earthquake, and there was an angel that came and rolled the tomb away, yeah, or the stone away, and. Jesus was alive. The tomb was empty. But you know something cool with this rock? Yeah. What's on the other side? Oh, it has a surprise. Just like the surprise that the tomb was empty and Jesus was alive, this rock has a surprise. The cross that reminds us that Jesus died for our sins and was raised so that we might have new life. Isn't that cool? It's good news, isn't it? It's good news. Yes. What's this? Oh, the, the bug. He keeps wanting, he keeps wanting it. I think I'll just let him be. Uh, so before we close in prayer, I have another Easter surprise for you. We're bringing back the dumbness. But we're going to pray first, and then I'm going to give them to Anna and let you go back to Anna to get them. Okay? Shall we pray? Dear God, thank you so much for sending us your son. Thank you for Jesus. And thank you for raising Jesus to new life and promising us that you will raise us to new life too.
gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord was descending from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said he would. Come, see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples, and then suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Word of God, word of life. May be seated. Grace to you and peace from our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. There are four different accounts of the resurrection story from four different Gospels. And I find Matthew's account of the resurrection story to be the most striking and dramatic. It's the only Gospel to record earthquakes, both at Jesus' death and here, now. At Jesus' resurrection. The story begins with two women on their way to the tomb when suddenly there's an earthquake. How many of you have, an, have experienced an earthquake? Just a show of hands. I'd love to hear your stories. I've only experienced an earthquake once that I'm aware of or that I can remember. But the funny thing was that it took place during a funeral. I was assisting in my first parish in Southern California, and just as soon as the preacher who was preaching at the funeral began to talk about our dear member who had died, suddenly it was like a herd of elephants coming. And the cross, which was about as large as that, but hanging, and it was brass, hanging over the altar began to swing. And I was seated not far away. And I looked up, wondering if I should move. And then as suddenly as it began, it was over. But we all laughed a sigh of relief and began wondering if Peg, the woman who had died, wanted us to know that her tomb had indeed been opened. She had been raised from the dead and was now in the arms of her Savior. But admittedly, we were all left a little shaken from the vent. Recently, I ran across this picture that my daughter drew in grade school. She had to draw an earthquake, and now this might not give you enough information until you see the rest of the page. Shake the paper! It says it all right there. <laughs> it is one of my favorite drawings. And now I think it's also one of my favorite Easter images because it reminds me that when we've been shaken, our lives are forever changed. We never are quite the same again. I want to share one more earthquake story that has left me shaken. Just after 4 a.m., everything started rolling. I was awake, texting with my friend when it happened. 
I grabbed my family and we lay on the ground trying to find shelter and covering our heads. The building started to crash down and everything collapsed and we were buried. I started digging and after about an hour I managed to open a hole in the wall and managed to get out. I pulled out my father, then my mother, and then my sister. And thankfully they are okay. But we lost 10 members of our family. This was a quote from one of the survivors of the Turkey's of Turkey's most recent earthquakes. The earth moved and nothing is the same for these people. Knowing that thousands of people are still suffering should shake us. The ground underneath them has, has shifted and there is still trauma. When Jesus died, the ground underneath Mary Magdalene and the other disciples seemed to fall away. It shifted and they too experienced a trauma and a feeling that left them numb and afraid. And now three days later, here they are arriving at the tomb to do what people do when they lose a loved one. They came to the tomb to grieve. And suddenly there was another earthquake. Once again, Mary Magdalene and the disciples' lives would never be the same again. To add to the shock that they were already feeling, this time the earthquake was accompanied by an angel that had the appearance of lightning. Now, I don't know about you, but if an angel appeared in the midst of an earthquake, I would certainly think it was the end. Matthew tells us that he is the one who rolled the stone away. And he spoke to the women, telling them not to be afraid. At this point, you might expect Jesus to have walked out of the tomb like Lazarus, but the tomb is already empty. The resurrection has already taken place while the tomb was sealed or while the movement was going on. It was an act of God apart from human view. Jesus has been raised from the dead, his tomb is empty, and the angel invites the women to come and see. Come and see. These are the same words that Jesus used to invite his disciples to follow him. Using these same words, come and see. And then the angel quickly tells the women to go and tell. Go and tell the disciples that Jesus will meet them in Galilee, just as he said he would at the Last Supper a couple of chapters earlier in Matthew. Now, Galilee has a special meaning for Matthew. Dr. Arlen Hultgren reminds us that in Matthew, chapter 4, Matthew quotes Isaiah, calling Galilee, Galilee of the Gentiles. Galilee, we might say, is the doorway to the world. For Matthew, Jesus' love extends to the Gentiles. It extends to the world. The nation, the gospel is for the nations, not just for Israel. So running from the tomb, the women go to meet the other disciples and tell them everything that they have seen and heard, when suddenly Jesus is there again saying, Greetings! Hi! Good morning! And then Jesus reiterates the commission. Go and tell the disciples to meet me in Galilee. This double commissioning to go and tell and the promise that the disciples must go to Galilee to find the risen Christ is important. It's important to the story and it is, it's been important for the history of the church and it is important today. Since Galilee is the doorway to the world in the thinking of Isaiah and Jesus and Matthew, the light of the gospel then is for the whole world, not just for the Jewish people, not just for the original disciples, and not just for us. The good news that Christ is risen 
this news needs to be taken to the world. God's gift of new life and hope is for all people, not just for us. I can imagine that there was a confused mixture of fear and grief and joy that accompanied and still fills the people of Turkey and Syria. Joy when they discovered loved ones alive, but still fear and death surround them. The life they once knew is no more. So what now? And I think that's the same question we need to ask ourselves today. What are we going to be doing or what are we going to do now that we've been shaken by this news? Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Even in the midst of fear or brokenness, we are called to worship God and tell our story. Restored and made new in Christ Jesus, our risen Savior, you are called to represent him in the world. Jesus continues to call us, his disciples, to follow him into the world, to represent him, and to bring this news to those who are still suffering. God took on flesh in Jesus to learn what it meant to live in a time and place and space that holds grief and pain. When Jesus went to the tomb of his close friend, Lazarus, knowing full well that Lazarus would be raised from the dead, two of the most beautiful words in scripture describe Jesus' experience when he saw Mary weeping. It says, Jesus wept. God knows what it means to live in this world that holds pain and grief. And God longs to shake open every tomb. And we know too well what living life amidst pain is like. Yet because Jesus was raised from the dead, we, like St. Paul, can claim these words. Though we are hard-pressed on every side, we are not crushed, perplexed, but need not be in despair, persecuted, but never abandoned, struck down, but never destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. God is not only the God of sufferers, but the God who suffers. The pain and fallenness of humanity have entered into the heart of God, and in and through Jesus, God has broken the bonds of death so that we will be able to live with God, and God wants the world to know it. So, beloved children of God, death might surround us and be working to destroy us, but life, real life, exists for us, and in a twinkling of an eye, in the blink of an eye, like a trumpet underground that sounds the alarm, the earth will shake open and the stones will be rolled away and you too will be raised from the dead. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, so too shall we be raised. Today, as we celebrate that Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Jesus calls us to go, to be open to the wounds of this world, to mourn with those who mourn, to weep with those who weep, to be shaken over humanity's agony. Because when we enter into the company of the suffering, we discern the anguish and anger of God against sin and death. 
And then we are reminded that this is not the last word. God has shaken earth's tomb and raised Jesus from the dead for you. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. to be seated, and at this time, I invite our baptismal um, family and the sponsors to please come forward to the font. Not only do we get to celebrate new life, we get to celebrate new life in baptism today. In the death, in, or in baptism of our, of our gracious Heavenly Father, Jesus frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity, and by water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ, living with Christ and in the communion 
of the saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Sponsors. Thank you. Parents, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your children baptized into Christ? Thank you. Parents, as you bring your children to receive this gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people, to bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, nurture them in faith and prayer, so that your children may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your children grow in the Christian faith and life? Thank you. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture these persons in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Holy Spirit and to help them live in the covenant of their baptism and in communion with the church? Thank you. People of God, do you promise to support Thomas and Fern and pray for them in their new life in Christ? We do. Let us then confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The floods shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up. For Christ has brought us over to the land of promise, and he sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit and wash away sin in this cleansing water. Clothe the baptized with Christ. Claim your daughters and sons no longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, Thomas, you get to go first. Just lean over. Thomas, Madison, Carlton, I baptize you in the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Spirit. Fern? Fern, Madison, Carlton, I baptize you in the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. 
Sustain Thomas with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Thomas, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Sustain, burn, Madison Carlton, with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Fern, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. O God, giver of all life, look with kindness on the mother and father of these children. Let them ever rejoice in the gift that you have given them. Make them teachers um, and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally with their children the salvation you have given through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Through baptism, God has made these children members of the priesthood we all share in Jesus Christ, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all the world. Turn around. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as fellow members of the body of Christ, children of the same heavenly Father, and workers with us in the kingdom of God. I'm going to have you come over here to the middle with me. And please welcome our new brother and sister into the family. Congratulations and welcome to the family. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please strand and greet those near you with a sign of Christ's peace. So this is where we usually do ministry notes. Sign up for the day of service. Read your bulletin. Come back to church next week. <laughs> Let's worship God with our offering.
Absolutely. I invite you to please stand. And join in the prayers as found in your bulletin. Oh Lord, I cry to you for help. Give me the joy of your saving help again. And your Let my mouth be full of your praise. And your glory all day long. Every day will I bless you. And praise your name forever and ever. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. He redeems my life from the grave. And crowns me with mercy and kindness. Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come before you. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all danger and harm. We ask you now to preserve and keep us also this day from all sin and evil, that in all our thoughts, words, and deeds we may serve and please you. Into your hands we commend our bodies and souls and all that is ours. Let your holy angels have charge over us, that the wicked one have no power over us. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God, and at God's table of grace, all of God's children are welcome. You are welcome. No matter the past you bring, no matter the death that seems to lurk so near. This is God's table, and he has a place here for you. Come as you are invited. I will invite you to be seated and give you just a little bit of direction. We were moving a lot of tables around. So um, these two sections, it will be like we have been doing. You will come to the center. You will come down the center. This stool will have gluten-free wafers on it, if that is your choice. You are invited to take them as you come by. If not, the pastors or someone will meet you here with bread, and they will speak a blessing on the bread. When you move to the side, there are two ways to receive the wine. Uh, one is by intinction. Someone will be holding a chalice, and you are invited to take that bread and to dip it in the chalice and eat that way. Now, I say this all the time, and it's always giggly, but it needs to be repeated. 
Should you put the bread in your mouth first? <laughs> Do not retrieve it <laughs> to dip it. Either we will give you a new one, or next to the, next to the chalice there is a table, and there are four stations. That table will have a tray of some wine, but a great deal of grape juice. And so if that is your preference, you're invited to take that from the tray and commune with that instead. Um, so that's how this works and this works. The side aisles, you will notice there's a table there and there's a table there. So you'll come towards the, cent towards the middle, come down the front, and you will commune and return by the side. You will come down here. You will cut in front of the orchestra and return back by the side there. Please note, there are cellos near your feet. So gently, yes, cellist, gently walk by the cellos. We're going to get them as out of your way as possible, but there is room to go behind. There is a basket along the wall there, and there for your empties if you take the little cup, and there is a basket there, and there should you come from the center and return by the side aisles. Everybody's ready, yes? Hallelujah. <laughs> Let us worship God in communion.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which you have received, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and always. Amen. Now receive the benediction. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Amen. Let us sing. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. You are forgiven and free.
one, two, because he lives. And let us try because he lives. Angela? Um, Paul, uh, we will rehearse briefly here. So, because you know. Strings ready? One, two, three, four. Okay, I rest on New Year's.